with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I'm having trouble here. Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 is where we're going to start. Can you flip me, please? It's not allowing me to. <clears throat> okay. Let me get to another screen here. I wonder why I did that this morning. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Standing on the reading of God's word, if you will. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed from the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you today for your word. We praise you today for the goodness of God. We pray that you will open our eyes that we can see and our ears that we can hear. I pray in Jesus' name that you will let the Word of God come into our heart, minister to us, and change us. God, that you will help us to understand and apply the Word of God to our lives today. I praise you. I worship you for the ministry. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that speaks to your people. Now speak to your people by your presence and by your power. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. I'm going to talk this morning about the transformed man by the supernatural power of grace. Um, the transformed man is a man whose inner spirit is changed. Now look what Colossians 3 and 10 says. It says that having put on a new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. And then let's contrast that with Matthew chapter 23, verses 27 and 28. It said, Jesus speaking, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside appear beautiful, but inside they're full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. So you too outwardly appear righteous to men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. So there's a contrast here that you can see. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, the Bible said that it is as the Spirit of the Lord moves on a man that transforms him. And then it said in Colossians 3.10 that you were being renewed into the image of the one who created him. But contrary to that man is the man who is full of dead, who is full of dead bones. So there's a transformation that has to happen between men. Between God and men. Now I want to tell you today, the thing we need to understand is that a man can be just as full of God as he is full of evil. Yes, he can. That's what Matthew chapter 23 said. It says you are dead men on the inside. A man can be as dead on the inside as he is alive. The reason that a man is dead because he is after the curse and he's after the fallen nature. And when Jesus died on Calvary's tree to save you and you believed on him, he quickened your inner man and changed you so that you could become and have the ability to look into yourself in an unveiled view and see what's on the inside of you that you need to get fixed based on what the Word of God is saying. That's how a man gets transformed. I want to go back to that scripture if I can. It said, but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror. Did you ever consider the fact that you as a child of God have the unveiled ability to, to look into yourself and into your life and begin to realize the things that the Holy Spirit is showing you that needs to be taken out of you? Have you ever thought about the fact that this is not something that the spirit realm is not relaying to you openly and clearly. Just like you look in a mirror and see a blemish on your face or see that you need to shave or see that you didn't pluck your eyebrows or see that you have some blemish somewhere that you look in a mirror and say, well, I need to do that. The Bible declares that there is a spiritual mirror that comes from the inside out that you have the opportunity to look into and say, yes, I need 
to stop whatever the blemish is that's going on within me, and I need to crucify that so that God, and He will do it by His Spirit, but God can transform me into the same image of glory to glory. What glory? God in Jesus Christ changing image that brought Christ into the earth, birthed Him as a man, grew Him to the cross, and glory came into the earth through Him, and glory died on Calvary's tree, and glory rose from the dead, and glory ascended into glory, and glory ascended to heaven on high, and from glory to glory, it is done for you by the Lord of the same manner and by the same Spirit. You have the ability to look by the Holy Spirit into yourself and determine what is it in me that needs to be changed. There's nothing wrong with identifying where your weaknesses are. Did you know I've never been in a job interview that they didn't ask me two questions? They said, what are your strengths? Very easy to talk about. What, what do you do well? Very easy to say. <laughs> Every one of you could but when it comes down to your weakness, that's where you want to hide things. You don't want to tell them in that job interview, well, I'm weak because I have a quick temper. I'm weak because I easily get offended. I'm weak because people can hurt my feelings. I, I, I'm weak because I trust people too much. See, those are things that you want to conceal. But every interview I go to, they ask me the same two questions. I haven't been to one for a while, but I imagine the same two things are there. And you know, I had to really sit down with myself and say, how am I going to talk about the things I feel like I'm weak at? But in the spirit realm, the Bible says that you have the ability to look into a mirror with an unveiled face and see what is actually going on on the inside of you, measure it against the image of the Son of God and say, does what I'm doing match the measure of the stature of Christ Jesus and then make a choice? Do I hold on to that to my own detriment? Now let me tell you this right now. If you women had a pimple on the end of your nose, and you looked in a mirror and saw that pimple on the end of your nose, you would no more go out of that room with a pimple on the end of your nose than you would sprout wings and fly from here to California. You wouldn't do it. You would say, no, no one can see. You would pull out this and that, and you would pop it and cover it and smash it and push it and, and, and paint it until that blemish was almost unnoticeable. And then you would go to your husband and say, do you see anything different about me? And you know you would. And we men are the same way. A little less. A little less. But we're the same way. We don't ever want to go out. I, you know, I have a propensity for spitting food. I, 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 I don't, I, I, you know, people say, well, Christian, you have such a big mouth. How could you ever miss it? Well, I miss it because I put so much on the fork, I can't get it all in there at times, and it spills on my shirt. And then I go to try to wash. I, I, I put water on it, or water, wash it away and scrape it down. And then guess what happens? There's a bigger stain than there was before. Because now there was a stain, and now beyond that, there's a water stain. Because I want to hide the things in me that I see as witnesses, and I don't ever want to bring anybody's attention to something that would say, Pastor's wearing a dirty shirt. Glory to God. Pastor didn't think, where did he get that shirt today? Well, he must have not, he must have worn that shirt. Yes, sir. I don't want to show my blemishes. And neither do you. But in the spirit world, ladies and gentlemen, the identification of blemishes are the things that transform and renew your mind. Because when you identify them, you identify them based on what the Word of God is teaching you. Now, if the Word of God isn't teaching you anything, and the Word of God isn't transforming you by anything, and the Word of God isn't giving you an unveiled face to be transformed by, if there's not a mirror of the Word of God for you to use as a transformation mechanism because you don't know the Word of God, and you don't spend time in the Word of God, and you don't spend time meditating on the Word of God, and you don't 
do Bible study and you don't try to build up your most holy faith by the Word of God, you will develop blemishes that will go from being an accident to a habit and then you'll tell people, that's just the way I am. Well, that's not true, ladies and gentlemen, because every blemish on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit is using the Word of God to transform you from who you were into a new creation in Christ Jesus. And I guarantee you the new creature, Jesus Christ, is spotless and blemishless and perfect and seated at the right hand of God in such a fashion and you have been named after His family and you are the perfection of God based on the Word of God if you let the Word change you. Yeah! It's all about what the Word does. This is what He said. He said that you could be renewed into the image of the one who created you. I didn't say that. I said that in my words, but Colossians Paul said it in 3.10. He said you could be renewed into the creation of the end of the man who created you. You don't have to walk around with spiritual blemishes. You don't have to walk around with spiritual problems. You don't have to walk around in all the works of the flesh that would degrade you and bring you down. That would cause the devil to get a toehold in your life. You with unveiled face, face can look in the Word of God and be transformed and changed by the Word through the Spirit according to 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. And it is the same Spirit that changed that made, that transformed Jesus Christ, the Creator. Or you can do what Matthew 23 says. You can be like whitewashed sepulchers. You can look good on the outside, but the blemishes on the inside is what God is looking at. You can look good on the outside and have hate on the inside. You can look good on the outside and have anger, and have lust, and have the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes all on the inside of you, and everybody looks at you and says, oh, isn't he a good person? I was somewhere the other day, and they were talking about this fellow, and I knew the guy, and I knew that every word they were saying about him was a bald-faced lie, and they begin to talk about, oh, he's such a good guy. Oh, what a wonderful, what a great family man he is. And I thought to myself, family man? He never goes home. How can you be a family man? But see, that's the whitewashed sepulcher they wanted to see him as. That's how they wanted to perceive him. And that's how he wants to be perceived. But the truth is, there's a blemish on the inside of him. There's an imperfection that's never been renewed, nor been transformed, nor been changed into the image of the one who created him. And therefore, on the outside, people say nice things. And on the inside, he's full of dead man's bones. He's dead on the inside. There is a supernatural transformation that occurs, church. When Jesus Christ comes into your life. Now let's look. Man can be full. He can be full of God. Or he can be full of the devil. Now let's prove it. Adam was full of God. He was so full of God. He didn't even know he was naked. He had no sense. Of his nakedness. And then all of a sudden. His inner man died. And became his dead bones. And all of a sudden he realized, and so did Eve, we are unclothed. See, a man can be full of God, or he can be as full of the nature of Satan. And that's where Adam was, and that's where Eve was. They went from the fullness of God, one minute in chapter 2, to the fullness of the nature, a dead man's bones. You can be full of God, or you can be full of the devil. One of the two. Someone said, well, now I know people that aren't saved, and they're not that bad. They don't live that 
Well, I know a man that's a wealthy man never gone to church doors, doesn't go to church, but he helps a lot of people. He gives money to a lot of folk. Bless God, I know so and so is needed as he came and wrote them a check, glory to God. And God's going to remember that. No, 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 and no, no, no. No, 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 no. Ah, oh, he's a dead man doing a nice thing. But in the spiritual realm, he's a dead man. Because his spirit has never been transformed into the image of the one who created him. He, in the goodness of his own mind and his own senses, decided to give a hand out to somebody. Not from the love of man, but from the love of the very thing that they are saying about how good a guy he got his reward when they said the word. But my friend, there is a spiritual reward that is laid up in heaven for you in a place that God has prepared for you. And that sounds good. But my friend, the Bible also declares that the transformed man is a man that is blessed today because on the inside of him, he is in relationship, communication, communion and union with the God of the universe and the God of the universe is meeting and supplying every need according to his riches and glory. Amen. Say amen. amen. See this good guy type of thing, that doesn't impress God. What impresses God is a man that is transformed from the inside out. Full of God and after God. Pursuing God. Not pursuing the praise of those that would look and say how good a dude he is. One spirit causes trouble. The other spirit, which is the satanic spirit. And the other spirit, which is the spirit of God, makes a man to live in peace and in harmony with himself, his God, and his world. Now I want you to know, when the blemishes get covered, when the blood covers the sin, the Bible said the yoke is not fixed, it's broken. It's destroyed. When the blemish is destroyed, that man can live in complete harmony and complete unity and complete peace with his world, with his God, and with most of all, himself. Do you know what the Bible said? The Bible said, I will keep him, not them. I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. Him. I can live in perfect peace because the blemishes that are on the inside of me have been destroyed by the blood. They have been destroyed, not broken. They have been destroyed. I have been made to be completely free by the blood of Jesus Christ. We look at Jesus and the power of God that was in him and that worked out of his inner spiritual self and we forget that he was not operating on his own. He operated from a transformed and transfigured spirit that changed and impacted his outer man. Now let's look at how this thing works. In Mark chapter 5 and verse 20, there is the story of a man of whom Jesus came <laughs> and found him. And that man was so full of hell that he named himself Legion. He was so full of blemishes that he named himself Legion. Jesus said to him, Who are you? What's your name? And he said, My name is Legion. For we are many. For the blemishes in me are many. For the problems in me are many. For the struggles in me are many. They are too many for me to name. I can't name them all. I can't tell you all of the things that's wrong on the end. But on the inside of me, I know that there are so many that my name has to be called Legion. In other words, every bone in me is a dead bone. Now watch. Mark 5 and 2 said that when he came out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Now I want you to tell me what about that man on the outside looked like there was an issue. 
They're men of a man. He was just a man. He had lived in the tombs, but he was just a man. But Jesus identified the root of an untransformed man the moment he saw him because he said, that man looks like a man. Look at what it said. And there came a man out of the tomb. Well, what's a man look like? Did he look like Joey? Huh? Did he look like Mr. Smith? Does he look like me? Did he look like him? Well, all men tend to have similarities. So he looked just like every other man. But Jesus identified in him the thing that was not transformed. They didn't know what the problem with the man was. They had tried to bind him. They had tried to chain him. They had put him out of their city. They made him live in the tombs. They didn't know why he acted like he acted. They didn't know why he thought like he thought. They didn't know why he flared up like he flared up. They didn't know anything other than the fact that the man had something wrong with him. Jesus saw him and said, The man has an unclean inner man. His bones are dead. Well, now he was full of evil. Full of evil. Now we look around in the world today and we see people full of evil. They're full of evil. I watched the video this week of the fellow that was arguing with a woman over a parking spot. When a man came out and pushed him to the ground and he pulled a gun and killed him. You may have watched that. Full of evil. Full of evil. Everywhere we look there's evil. They look like men. And let me tell you something, church. If you look at them, you can't tell. You can't tell who they are. You can't tell what's going on on the inside of them. You can't tell what they're thinking or how they're feeling. We had a major incident about a mile from my house sitting this week. The police chased the man all the way from Yankee County, and there he jumped out and disappeared. You can't tell what's going on with people. Fire the gun at the police. You can't tell what's going on with people. You can't look at him and say, boy, that guy. But Jesus looked at him and in his spirit, he saw that man. And he said, he has an unclean spirit. Now those around him could contain him. We look for government to contain our problems. The government's not going to contain our problem. We look for people to contain our problem. We look for police to contain our problem. We look for husbands and wives to contain our problem. We're not going to get that containment of problems from an outside source. The containment of every issue of life is always contained from an inside source and from an inside source only. Now, listen to what the Word said. Uh, he was full of all the wrong things. Now look at Luke chapter 11 and verse 21. In Luke chapter, Mom said this to me this morning and it hit me like an anvil. In Luke chapter 11, the Bible said that they are full of a strong man. They're full of something on the inside of them that is strong. It's debilitating. It's blemishing. It flares up at a time whenever you, you just can't hardly see it coming. But the next thing you know, there's trouble. There's trouble on every hand because they're full of a strong man that is inside of them and the nature of that strong man is that Jesus had just cast out a devil in Luke chapter 11 and they marveled and wondered by it and they said this man cast out devils by the devil himself and Jesus said to them if that be so then why aren't your men casting out devils because I am the son of God and do you know that in John chapter 3 they said to him we know that thou art sent to us from God, but in Luke chapter 11, they called him a devil because he could see things and get things done in people that they could not do because the nature of the unclean spirit was inside of them. Their bones were dead. They were whitewashed sepulchers. They looked good, but on the inside they were dead. I ask you the question today. Are you struggling in the spirit domain? Is the outside looking good, but on the inside there's not enough of the Word of God to change the blemishes and transform you into the image of the created new creator, Son of God? Is that the case in your life? Is that the case in my life? Where am I today as I deal with this transformed man? Now here he was. Jesus said there was a strong man that took a hold of him. And that strong man was armed. And he was guarding his place. This man now in Mark chapter 5. 
had an encounter with Jesus. He met the Master. You've heard that song. When I met the Master. Never heard that song? That's the only line I can remember of it. But I want you to get that tune. When I met the Master. Because when he met the Master, things changed. They no longer needed change for him. Watch what the Bible said in Luke eleven twenty two. 22. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him, there is the Son of Almighty God walking into the realm of the spirit of the unclean man and saying to him, come out of them, come out of him. And the unclean spirit left them and talked to him. And he sent them into the swine and the swine went into the ocean, into the sea and destroyed every one of them. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a stronger one that lives on the inside of you. The Bible said greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You have met a master that is stronger than the blemishes that seem to encompass you, that is stronger than the pain that seems to surround you, that's stronger than the hurt that seems to go through you, that's stronger than the offense that seems to throw you. My God, this God of Calvary named Jesus Christ is a greater one and He lives within you. Amen. Glory to God. What a wonderful God we serve. Jesus said, but with a stronger one, the stronger one has come, Joey. The stronger one lives within me. And he is transforming me. Someone said to me, well, preacher, are you perfect? No, I'm not perfect. You're not either. But we have the opportunity through the word of God to look into the unveiled face, nothing hidden of the master and see what about us needs to be changed and then the Spirit of God transforms us from the inside out. Why? Because we are a living, quickened spirit in the inner man made so by Jesus Christ and by the promise of the Holy Spirit being sent into God's people. What a wonderful thing to know. The old guard had to fall in the man, in the demon possessed. Now watch. Then in Luke 8, 35 and 36, this is what the word said. And the people went out to see what had happened. They went out to see what happened to this man. Now I want you to know, they could do nothing with him. They couldn't get him off drugs. They couldn't get him out of alcohol. They couldn't get him to stop beating his wife. They couldn't get him to stop cheating on his wife. They tied him in chains and that didn't hold him. They put him in the tombs and that didn't scare him. He was a terror in that area. And they came out to see what was it that changed him. What was it that changed him? Church, I'm here to tell you today, the only hope that we have, the only hope that you have, is to dig in and dive into the Word of God and allow the Word of God to change you. You're not going to get changed out of a psychology book. You're not going to get changed at a university. You're not going to get changed at a high school. You're not going to get changed sitting at Grandma's kitchen table. You're not going to get changed by listening to your best friend's wife or your best friend's husband. You're not going to get changed there. Never. No change will ever occur until you come to the place where you have been transformed by Him that is the Creator and done so by the same Spirit that transformed and transfigured Jesus Christ of Nazareth and made Him what He was and gave Him to you to dwell in you as the hope of glory and greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Hallelujah. Yes, brother. When they came to Jesus, they came to see what he had done. They came to follow and look at what he had done for this man. They found the man whom the demons had got out sitting at Jesus' feet. Sitting at Jesus' feet. Now why is that significant? Why is it important? What's the message to me and you? 
A transformed life by the supernatural power of grace will leave you in a position where you will sit down and be taught and educated by the Spirit of God at the foot of Jesus Christ. And according to Acts chapter 1 and verse 2, God, when He raised Jesus from the grave, Jesus began to command the Holy Spirit and the apostles whom He had chosen and made them something that they were not into witnesses unto Him in Samaria, Jerusalem, Judea, and to the uttermost parts of the world. When you get yourself transformed, you will want to be in church. You will desire to be where the Word is. You will want to be in the assembly of the children of God. You'll want to hear the old songs of Zion. You'll want to read and study the Word. You'll want to turn on Christian television. You'll want to listen to them because you'll just want to be where the Transformer is. Sitting at the feet of Jesus. What a wonderful thing. Now watch the next word. He was dressed and in his right mind. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that tells me something. It tells me there is a right mind and it tells me there is a wrong mind. That man had experienced both of them. I want to ask you this question. Which mind do you think he liked? Do you think he liked the mind that put him chained and living in tombs and demons working out of the inside of him? Or do you think he liked his right mind where his right mind put him at the feet of the Son of Almighty God? What do you think he liked and what would you like? Would you like to keep living the life you're living and going through the struggles that you're going through and walking in and out and out and in of good and bad and evil and good and peace and poverty? And or would you like to be clothed in your right mind so that your mind can constantly be kept at peace regardless of what's going on on the outside of you? Well, that's where this man was. This man was dressed. What was he dressed in, preacher? I don't know. I just can imagine. He put on the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He lifted up his hand and prayed. I imagine he was dressed in new clothes. What was the new clothes, preacher? It was the new clothes of righteousness. It was the new clothes of the new birth. It was the new swaddling clothes that covered him in the righteousness of God based on Christ Jesus. I'm sure that what he was dressed in was a dress that made God and all of heaven stand up and sing the praises of Almighty God because he had been changed and transformed and heaven had to sing a song to the glory of God because a sinner had been saved. I'm sure those clothes were important. He was dressed in his right mind. He could see. He could see now that there was a new way to live. See? He didn't know there was another way to live. He didn't know there was another avenue to live. If he did, do you think he would have chosen to be a man possessed of devils to the extent that they would call him legion? Had he known there would have been another way? Had he been exposed to another way? Had he come in contact with another way? But I want you to see what the people of his time did to him. The people of his time did not love him. They did not engraft him. They did not care for him. They didn't wrap their arms around him and say, let us teach you in the way of the Lord. They didn't do for him anything that would minister to him, that would care for him, that would say, we love you, we care for you, we want to help you, we want to bless you, we want you to be a part of our assembly, we want you to come with us and let us teach you and train you in the way of the Lord. They did not do that. No, they shut the door on him. They closed him out. They put him in the tombs. And they tied him with chains. And they said, you're not welcome here. Because you have a problem that's not like us. Huh? What? Jesus said, you people are like whitewashed sepulchers. 
the inside. You got a problem. He wasn't talking to the demoniac when he said that. He was talking to Israel and the leaders of Israel when he said to them, you all are a sham. You're a lie. There's no truth in you. But they turned away their own. Oftentimes I wonder how many of the house of God, the church today, are turning away those men that would be the ones that would change their city. Now watch what happens here. Those who saw what happened said, we saw him in his right mind. We saw him after Jesus had cast the devil out of him. You can have as much of God as you want, ladies and gentlemen. God is not hiding from you. You can have as much of Him as you choose. You can choose to live a halfway life and be tossed to and fro by the devil. Or you can choose to neither give place to the devil, draw near unto God, and He will draw near unto you. That's what the demoniac did. See, the demoniac said to him, stay away from me, I know who you are. But then he began to communicate with him. <clears throat> now I want you to watch this. I want you to get this now, get this clear. Did you know what caused the fall? Did you know what caused man's nature to become as dead bones? Huh? You will say to me, well, Abe ate the apple and gave it to her. And I would say to you, uh-huh, but something happened before that. The same thing that happened here. Eve began to communicate with the serpent. Eve began to carry on a conversation with the serpent. Eve began to talk to the serpent. And they began to reason back and forth. And the next thing you know, Eve, through conversation, entangled herself until she ate and died. Here's Legion. Legion got out of his condition the same way Eve got the world into their condition. He began to communicate with God. He said, who are we? He said, we're legion because we're many. First thing he said to him was, don't come around here, son of God. <clears throat> Jesus began to communicate with him. Now what's the theme here? You can die by communicating with the devil. Or you can live in your right mind, clothed, dressed, and blessed, and be a blessing by communicating to God Almighty through the name of the Son of Almighty God and be set free from every blemish that would contain you and contaminate you and make you talk, act, and think like the world. Because when the greater one gets in communication with you, you become a child of the living God made free from every bondage of hell. All done by communication. All done by words that were spoken. Eve spoke words and said, Oh no, that that he didn't say that, but 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 what if he didn't say that? And he succumbed by communication. Legion turns around and through communication with Christ. All of a sudden, the devil was cast out, the blemish was gone. How all of a sudden he was sitting at the feet of Jesus transformed through his communication. What are you communicating to God? What are you telling God? What are you talking about to God? This man sat at the feet of Jesus clothed and in his right mind. And they came and looked at him and said, how can this be? And they were afraid. Now I want you to get that. The world, the world is afraid to deal with the lost because they are dead bones on the inside of themselves. The church is afraid to deal with dead bones because we are dead in often cases on our own inside. But Jesus dealt with the unclean, healed them, set them in His right.
white pine and made them witnesses unto him throughout the whole world. What do you want? What do you want to communicate about? What do you want from God? Communicate. Communicate. You just need to get a hold of the correct strong man. Because there is a strong man, but there is one that's stronger than him. Mark 5, 18 through 20. Now watch this now. And when he was coming to the ship, he that was been, had been possessed with the devil prayed. He had said at Jesus' feet, been transformed to be in his right mind, had been changed and transformed by the Creator. He was made to look in a mirror and transform. And he asked him that he might just, Lord, let me be with you. If I can just be with you, how be it Jesus suffered him not. Jesus did not say to the man, you're on your own now, brother. You, you, I've done all for you I can do. Have you ever heard anybody say that to you? I've done all for you I can do. The doctor, I've done all for you I can do. I've given you all. Jesus suffered him not. But! Now right there's a key word in this whole thing. But he said unto him, here is what I want you to do for the rest of your days. You go and hold to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and have had compassion on oh, what a charge. What a charge God gave him. What a charge Jesus gave him. He didn't drop him off at the corner. He didn't roll into town and take his money and say, all right, buddy, I'll see you next time. He said, here is the job I'm going to bless that you're going to do. You're going to go and be a witness unto me and tell all of your friends what great things I've done. What did God do for him? Well, God totally set, made him free, delivered him from the bondage of the devil and gave him a brand new eternal. What did God do for you? Has God made you free? <coughs> then what is the difference in command to this man? Then the command to you. I suffer you not that you come with me right now. I'm not, it's not your day. It's not your time to be in glory with me. But you've been transformed by me. I've changed your life. I've changed your thinking. I've given you hope. I've gone from glory to glory. I've opened up the spiritual world that is in the mirror so that you can see in the spirit what you need to correct. Now I'm saying to you, go and tell the world what great things that I have done for you and what compassion I have shown unto thee. And the Bible said, watch it now, that same demon out of the tombs Chained, undone, unwanted, unkind, uncared for, went out and began to publish throughout all the capitalists what God had great faith Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. Are they marveling at you or are they shaking your head at you? Are they marveling with the walk you have with God? The communication and the relationship you have? Or are they shaking their head and saying, if that's what a Christian is, I don't want to have anything to do with it. He went out and began to publish. They marveled at the change in his spirit that manifested itself in his outer being. He was alive on the inside. Can you imagine the story he had to tell? He told the story of amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I 
arms wide, full of the devil. But now I see what a song. What a song. He could have said, He looked beyond my fault. What fault? Full of the devil. And saw my Manifested on the inside of him as he began to witness. <coughs> Manifested on the outside of him as he began to witness. Don't you suppose they stood up at attention when he walked by? Because he had been with Jesus. Oh, when I met the Master. He had been with Jesus. His witness was one that was real. His witness was one they could not forget because he was transformed by the supernatural power of Christ. Someone said, yeah, preacher, but they didn't seek God. They just marveled. They didn't seek God. Well, here's what I have to tell you. They didn't seek God today. They may not hear you today. But would you plant a seed in the ground? It doesn't sprout up today. It may sprout in a week. It may sprout in a month. But a seed planted is going to grow. We need to be seed planters of the transforming supernatural power of grace because of what God did for me. And what God did for you. It's amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me.
grace that taught your heart to fear. And grace, my fears are deep. How precious did that grace be? The hour I first believed. It was precious then, and it's precious now. I want you today to lay down. Lay down. Lay down. The sin that does so easily beset you. The offense that does so easily hurt you. The trouble that follows you. The poverty that seems to engulf your spiritual life. I want you to lay it down today. I want you to lay down the poverty that engulfs your spiritual life. I want you to lay down the poverty that involves and engulfs your home. I want you to lay it down because the grace of God has already been shed to transform you and to bring you to the image that is only changed and done by the Spirit of the Almighty God into the image of the one that created you. And your Creator God is full of every good and perfect gift that flows from the throne of God, that covers and destroys poverty, that covers and destroys spiritual downheartedness, that encourages a man and gives peace into his heart. I want you to lay it down today. I want you to stand to your feet in just a moment and raise your hands and say, Father, I'm clothed and in my right mind because I've heard the word of God. I'm clothed today by the power of God. Clothed and transformed by the power of God. And I stand to my feet today saying, I'm in my right mind and I'm seated at the right hand of Jesus Christ. And there at your feet, Father, I am made whole today. Stand in your feet if you believe it so. In Jesus' name. Raise your hands and worship me. Father, I thank you today. I thank you that you have made us free. That you've made us whole. That you've clothed us in righteousness. That you've clothed us in our right mind. And we can sit at your feet, Father. And sit at your feet and the world will marvel at what God has done in setting me, making me free of bondage, making me by force into the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. No longer poverty path. No longer in the chains of financial issues. No longer in the chains of offense. No longer in the chains of hurt. But free, free, free indeed by the power of a transforming supernatural grace of God. Oh God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is all I need. Jesus is all I need. Position 
at the feet of Jesus. Sit me in my right mind in the Spirit so that I can make the world hear the gospel of what Jesus has done for me. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Yes, amen. He's all I need. Thank you for being here today. The Word of God is so rich and real. It amazes me how the Holy Spirit puts the Word together so that it can minister to the lives of people. Today, I want you to walk out of here with this, this praise on your lips. I'm a transformed man because of the Word of God. I have sat at the feet of Jesus. I have been clothed in a new garment. It's called the righteousness of God. And now because I'm seated at the feet of Jesus, I'll hear from Him and He will minister to me and then I will publish what He has done for me. All around my world. That should be your song. That should be your song. That should be your blessing. You know why? Because He's all... I need He's all I need Jesus Am I right? Is all I need He's all I need Yes, He's all I need Jesus is all I need. Amen. God bless you. Go home and joy. Hallelujah. Be dismissed.